When it comes to cutting and storing hay, little things mean a lot. The timing of cutting, the dry down, and the density of your bales. They can all make a big difference in the performance of your cattle. One trend is more producers are putting up their forage as baleage or silage. One of the benefits of producing silage is that it's at a higher moisture versus your dry hay and your dry forage that, um, that you're producing. So with that, we're going to see less leaf loss and you're going to see overall less loss with respiration. So both of those things actually leads to overall better forage quality or overall higher nutritive value of those forages, which in turn is going to give you um, better feed to feed your livestock. Whenever you're um, deciding on where baleage will fit into your particular operation, it's always important to think about the class of livestock that you're feeding and where they are within the production cycle. For example, uh, younger growing cattle are going to have higher nutrient requirements. And this baleage overall is going to give you a higher nutrient value for feeding these livestock. Protein, as we all know, when you talk to your nutritionist, whether you're producing beef or you're producing milk, it's the most expensive ingredient. Uh, and so baleage or silage uh, is a golden opportunity to harvest more of your leaves. And in the case of alfalfa, for instance, 71% of the uh, value, nutritional value, is found where? It's found in the leaf. So if I can harvest more leaves and baleage gives me that opportunity, I can ha harvest a higher value of protein or a higher percentage of protein. If I can keep the bale temperature too hot when I wrap it, I can also save and conserve some more protein. So trying to get all that oxygen out is really the name of the game and bale density is ultimately where you want to be. The denser, the better. In fact, New Holland is working with Penn State University to do comprehensive research that will better define the impact of bale density and the factors that influence it. How do you set your baler to make the perfect bale? Uh, there are many different ways to do that. The main thing you want to focus on is getting it the highest density possible. Uh, and it, it requires, it's going to be harder on the equipment unless the equipment's designed for that. Uh, but you want to get a dense bale. It's going to be heavy. Uh, it's going to be more of a challenge to move, but it's still going to give you that less oxygen and ferment properly. So the things producers need to think about is getting rid of the oxygen, the proper moisture, and getting it sealed as quick as possible after you've chopped it or baled it. It's the goal to get the oxygen out of the bale as quick as you can, but okay, should I make that bale at 10 pounds per cubic foot? Is that good enough? Or is, is it 15? What's the goal? Is it 20? Where should we be? So we're seeking some answers. We'd like to see specifics on recommendations of bale density as well as moistures, because that's another big debate that rages on. I don't think we've teased out yet exactly with the ground speed, but the, it goes right back to those basic principles. You want to make a dense bale. And if you're going at 10 miles an hour and not making a dense bale, that's too fast. Uh, while on the other hand, going at four miles an hour, it's going to take you a lot longer to get the baling done. So you try to make a compromise, but make it as dense as you can make it. Bale density is even more important in putting up silage or baleage because less room for oxygen should lead to higher fermentation and less spoilage. And a higher amount of feed value per bale can save a producer a trip or two when they're hauling hay to their cattle. So what research has shown in the past is that with any fermented forage or any ensiled forage, typically the denser you can get, you can pack that forage, the better fermentation you're going to have. So in short, the quicker you can get the oxygen eliminated from that forage, whether you're packing it in a bunk or in a bag, or if you're baling it like we're doing in this particular study, typically the more dense you can get that, the better fermentation you're going to have, which overall is going to give you a better quality product to feed your animals. If you see a bale with a nice round radius and a square edge, that's the ideal silage bale. Um, and the reason it's ideal is, is those little divots on the edges, whenever you unroll those bales, especially the longer you want to keep them in storage, if there's going to be white sugar mold or white mold anywhere, it's going to be on those edges of the bale where those pockets are at because that forage wasn't as dense on those edges and there was more oxygen there.
The research project at Penn State is not yet complete. The team is continuing to look at a variety of factors that impact forage quality and the ability to avoid spoilage. This includes the width of windrows, the speed of baling, and even the different types of round baler design. And the concept is, is does the chamber design affect the density of the bale? The other thing is, is does ground speed affect the density of the bale? So as you pull a baler faster, it's generally thought that that reduces density. It's probably true, but just how fast does it reduce density? Can I, as a producer, pull that baler at 10 mile an hour to maximize tons per hour and take a small hit in density? I bet you there's balers that can do that, and I bet there's balers that can't. So we seek to find that answer as well. Finding answers and giving producers the tools to make better decisions and better quality feed for their cattle is the goal of the research. In Pennsylvania, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen.